How are we doing guys? So welcome back to my channel. Um, last week I posted a video that I created from Amsterdam and uh, got a good reaction on it. There was a few people asking me in particular on a few things that I did, a few effects and transitions. So today I'm going to show you one transition um, which was the going through the door effect which I did towards the end of the video. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you in this video today. So just before we start, just to let you know, um, I'm going to be doing this entire, pretty much this entire transition within Adobe After Effects. Um, so if you do have some basic knowledge of that, that would help, but I'm gonna be going through it step by step anyway. So if you're not really familiar with it and you wanna give it a try for the first time, then take it slow, go through it, and you, you probably will be able to put it off. So with regards to actually filming of this transition, there's not really much that you need to do. You just need to walk forwards with your camera towards the door. Um, just make sure that you're walking straight on and that's all you really need to do. Try and walk as stable as possible, obviously. Possibly using a gimbal if you have one or a steady cam, or if you are good with handheld, you could do that as well. But I would recommend using some sort of stabilization when walking forwards and obviously walk forwards as slow as you can. Maybe use a high frame rate as well, that could help. Okay, so let's jump over into Premiere Pro and then into After Effects so I can show you how to do this transition. Let's go. So select your two clips and replace with After Effects Composition. Once you're in After Effects, you just want to organize them. So rename um, both the clips so you can have your main clip, which is the doors, and then you can have the clip that's going to be transitioning to, you can just call it underneath clip. So now with your main clip selected, you just want to go up to animation and do a 3D track of the camera. Once that's selected, make sure that you change the shot type to variable zoom because you're obviously going towards the door and go down to the advanced tab and click on the detailed analysis because this will basically give you a more detailed track so more track points um, it will just take a little bit longer to solve it but i think it's worth it so once it's finished solving it could take a few minutes just um, select three points on the door itself which will bring up a circle icon and as long as that circle icon looks like it's on the same plane as the door those track points will do so I've just got these points here and you just want to right click and create null and camera so what that's done is basically just create a null object which is just an object it does nothing but just hold information so now it's just holding your tracking data that you've just created and this is important because we'll need to use this later so just take the the main and underneath clip and just bring them up to the top now as we zoom in you can see that the null is actually tracked to the door itself which is what we want Now make sure you're on the first frame of the composition. Select the main clip and duplicate the layer by pressing Command D if you're on a Mac or Control D if you're on Windows. And you can rename this clip and you can call it door because it's going to be the actual door that we use. So on the door clip, you just want to right click and go up to time and freeze frame. Then you just want to go to on the door clip again, go down to the effects and remove the 3D camera tracker. Now basically what we have is just a still image of the main clip. So now staying on the door layer and making sure that we're on the first frame of the composition, we just want to go up to the pen tool and create a mask around the door um, and take your time doing this. Zoom in 50 or 100% if you need to and just make sure that you're masking out the corners and the sides um, as cleanly as you can. Once you've done that, you basically have a door um, layer that you have created. And this is where we're going to use the null object and the tracking data that's on the null, null object that we created earlier. So you just want to grab this little pick whip tool on the door layer and drag it across to the null, which means that the door layer now has the same tracking information as that null has. Also, make sure you make the door layer a 3D layer by pressing this little cube icon. And as you can see now, as we punch into around 200% and we let the clip play forward, you can see that that door that we created, that door layer is now tracked onto the main clip as the null was earlier. Now with the door layer selected um, and zoomed in to 100 or 200%, just click A on your keyboard, which will bring up the anchor properties. And you just want to make sure that you position that little anchor point on to the side of the door where the hinge would be of the door which means that later on we can rotate that um, door on that hinge or via that anchor point 
Now once the anchor point is set, you just want to go down to the transform properties on that dual layer and you just want to scale it up and position it so that it's in the same place as it is on the main clip. And to help you to do this, you can reduce the opacity of the door clip so that you can see both of them at the same time to line them up as best as you can. And take your time again in doing this because it is an important step. So once that is done and we have a door that's tracked onto the main clip and is the same size, you just want to scrub forward in the composition to the point where you think you want the door to start to swing open. So I've gone to around five seconds here. Make sure you're down in the transform, you click on the Y stopwatch, which will bring up a keyframe as a starting point. Then go forward half a second or a second, depending on how quickly you want the door to swing open and change the Y transform properties anywhere between minus 90 or minus 100 degrees. I've got it at minus 95, which means it will swing round to that point from zero to minus 95 degrees, giving a door swinging open effect. So now that we have the door that swings open, we need to remove the door from the main clip, which is underneath and just basically create a black hole there. And obviously the best way to do that is just to create a mask. So now you want to go to the beginning of the composition with the main clip selected, create a mask, a small mask in the middle of the door. Make sure that you click the mask path and also invert it then scrubbing forward up until the point where the door starts to swing open you just want to expand that mask out so that it covers the whole door from that main clip and starts to and creates that black hole you then want to go forward to the point where the door has completely swung open and make sure that that mask is still in place um, just by checking the corners make sure that it's in place as best as possible and then between those two keyframes that have been created on the mask path just make sure you scrub through and make sure that you check that the black hole stays in position and covers the main the door on the main clip throughout the whole path. If it doesn't, then just adjust where you need to. In this on this occasion, it's done a, it's done an okay job in just making sure that the door on the main clip is completely blacked out throughout that throughout the two keyframes. So now all you need to do is just bring the underneath clip that we have and just make sure that you bring it to the point where and start it where the door starts to swing open so that when the door does swing open you start to see the next clip that we're going to transition into rather than a black hole. Now just make sure you select everything other than that underneath clip. You just want to right click and pre-compose and move all attributes into that new composition which has basically just made all those layers just into one single clip. Um, so you have that now, which you can call door scene and the underneath clip. Now go to the point where you think you want to zoom through the door into the next clip. And once you're at that point, click on the scale stopwatch, then move forward 10 to 20 frames, whatever you feel like, how quickly you feel like you want to zoom through that door and scale up on that keyframe until we've gone through the door and we don't see it anymore and we're into the next clip. Uh, now at this point we're pretty much done but just as a as a nice little touch it's good to to try and make sure that we smooth out that that scale in because it is a, a digital scale in so just select them both and you just want to right click and click easy ease which just makes sure that it just smoothly scales in rather than being a quick jerky motion. The final thing we want to do here in uh, After Effects is just to make sure that we make sure that Motion Blur is selected for all the layers and also for the entire composition up at the top. So that's pretty much it, the effect is done. Um, the only other thing that I did for the Amsterdam video was because it was a ending to the video and it was exiting through the doors rather than entering, I just right clicked on the main scene, door scene and I went to time and time reversed it. So basically just reversing that clip. So they just made sure that we came out of the door and the door slammed shut rather than going in. But again, that depends on what video you're doing. You might wanna do an introduction into the video through the door swinging open. Um, I wanted to finish it off. So I just uh, made sure that I reversed it, came out and the door slammed shut. So that's it, you're, you're done. Um, 
once you're back into Premiere Pro, just make sure that you do add a sound effect. I added a door shutting sound effect onto it because it does really, really help to, to sell the effect of the fact that the door is closing. So these sound effects are easy to get from anywhere. You can get them from YouTube. You can get them from websites like Epidemic Sound or freesound.org or Premium Beat. There's loads of websites out there where you can just get sound effects or you can just record a door closing sound effect yourself, which will take two seconds. Just bring it in, put it underneath at that point when the door closes and it just gives it that that bit more of a, of a real touch. Because basically at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're creating a, a fake door opening. So the more things you can do, like adding motion blur and adding sound effects to make it as real as possible, um, will sell it a bit better. So now all you have to do is render it out and the effect is done. So I've got a, another video planned, um, which is just going to show how I kind of went through that process of making that video in Amsterdam um, from sort of any planning that I did beforehand all the way through to how I edited it. So I'm going to I'm going to do that at some point just to give you guys an idea and answer more of the questions that I got um, one, once I posted that video. So just look out for that one. Uh, again, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope uh, this was useful in any way. If it was just it would be great if you could leave a like down below and uh, I'm going to see you guys around probably in the next video. See you later.